In Buddhism, bodhisattva is the Sanskrit term for anyone who has generated bodhicitta, a spontaneous wish and compassionate mind to attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings. Bodhisattvas are a popular subject in Buddhist art. <inaudible> Origins and outlines In early Buddhism, the term bodhisattva was primarily used to refer specifically to Gautama Buddha a contemporary of Mahavira in his former life. The Jataka tales, which are the stories of the Buddha's past lives, depict the various attempts of the bodhisattva to embrace qualities like self-sacrifice and morality. The bodhisattva is also called a pusa. This is one who had achieved Buddhahood but chooses to remain in merciful attachment to the world. In Sanskrit, this is called a Avalokiteshvara. According to the Jataka tales, the term bodhisattva originally referred to the pre enlightened practitioner of austerities that surpassed Sravakayana and Pratyekabuddhayana by far and completed the bodhisattvayana. Mahayana Buddhism. Mount Potalaka, for example, is one of bodhisattvayana. The term for practitioners who have not yet reached bodhisattvayana was not fixed, but the terms sravaka bodhisattva sheng wen pu sa and pratyekabuddha bodhisattva yuan jue pu sa had already appeared in the agamas of early Indian Buddhism. Mahayana Buddhism did not place much emphasis in honoring the sravakayana or pratyekabuddhayana since they were classified as part of the hinayana, but praise of the general bodhisattvayana was commonplace. Because Hinayana was disliked and the terms Sravaka Bodhisattva or Pratyekabuddha Bodhisattva were not widely used, while usage of the general term, Bodhisattva, had grown in popularity. Nevertheless, Bodhisattva retained an implied reference to someone on the path to become an Arhat or Pratyekabuddha. In contrast, the goal of the Bodhisattva path is to achieve Samyaksambodhi. Early and Theravada Buddhism In early Buddhism, the equivalent Pali term bodhisattva is used in the Pali Canon to refer to Gautama Buddha in his previous lives and as a young man in his current life in the period during which he was working towards his own liberation. During his discourses, to recount his experiences as a young aspirant he regularly uses the phrase, "...when I was an unenlightened bodhisattva". The term therefore connotes a being who is "...bound for enlightenment", in other words, a person whose aim is to become fully enlightened. In the Pali Canon, the bodhisattva is also described as someone who is still subject to birth, illness, death, sorrow, defilement, and delusion. Some of the previous lives of the Buddha as a bodhisattva are featured in the Jataka tales. According to the Theravada monk Bhikkhu Bodhi, the bodhisattva path is not taught in the earliest strata of Buddhist texts such as the Pali Nikayas and their counterparts such as the Chinese Agamas which instead focus on the ideal of the Arahant. In later Theravada literature, the term bodhisattva is used fairly frequently in the sense of someone on the path to liberation. The later tradition of commentary also recognizes two additional types of bodhisattvas: the Pachekabodhisattva, who will attain Pachekabuddhahood, and the Savakabodhisattva, who will attain enlightenment as a disciple of a Buddha. In the first second century BCE Sri Lankan work, the Buddhavamsa, the idea of the person who makes a bodhisattva vow to become a fully enlightened Buddha out of compassion for all sentient beings is presented. Another related concept outlined in the Buddhavamsa and in another text called the Karyapataka is the need to cultivate certain bodhisattva perfections or paramitas. Kings of Sri Lanka were often described as bodhisattvas, starting at least as early as Sirasanghabodhi r. 247 who was renowned for his compassion, took vows for the welfare of the citizens, and was regarded as a mahasattva Sanskrit mahasattva, an epithet used almost exclusively in Mahayana Buddhism. Many other Sri Lankan kings from the 3rd until the 15th century were also described as bodhisattvas and their royal duties were sometimes clearly associated with the practice of the Ten Paramitas. Theravadan Bhikkhu and scholar Walpola Rahula stated that the bodhisattva ideal has traditionally been held to be higher than the state of a sravaka not only in Mahayana but also in Theravada Buddhism. He also quotes the 10th century king of Sri Lanka, Mahinda IV, 956 to 972 CE, who had the words inscribed, "None but the bodhisattvas will become kings of a prosperous Lanka," among other examples. But the fact is that both the Theravada and the Mahayana unanimously accept the bodhisattva ideal as the highest. 
Although the Theravada holds that anybody can be a bodhisattva, it does not stipulate or insist that all must be bodhisattva which is considered not practical. Paul Williams writes that some modern Theravada meditation masters in Thailand are popularly regarded as bodhisattvas. Cholvahan observes that prominent figures associated with the self perspective in Thailand have often been famous outside scholarly circles as well, among the wider populace, as Buddhist meditation masters and sources of miracles and sacred amulets. Like perhaps some of the early Mahayana forest hermit monks, or the later Buddhist tantrics, they have become people of power through their meditative achievements. They are widely revered, worshipped, and held to be arhats or note, bodhisattvas. According to Jeffrey Samuels, it "...may more accurately portray the differences that exist between the two yanas by referring to Mahayana Buddhism as a vehicle in which the bodhisattva ideal is more universally applied, and to Theravada Buddhism as a vehicle in which the bodhisattva ideal is reserved for and appropriated by certain exceptional people." In Mahayana Buddhism Bodhisattva ideal Mahayana Buddhism is based principally upon the path of a bodhisattva. According to Jan Natyar, the term Mahayana great vehicle", was originally even an honorary synonym for bodhisattvayana, or the bodhisattva vehicle. The Astasahasrika Prajnaparamita Sutra contains a simple and brief definition for the term bodhisattva, which is also the earliest known Mahayana definition. This definition is given as the following. Because he has enlightenment as his aim, a bodhisattva mahasattva is so called. The earliest depiction of the bodhisattva path in texts such as the Ugraparaprasha Sutra describe it as an arduous, difficult monastic path suited only for the few which is nevertheless the most glorious path one can take. Three kinds of bodhisattvas are mentioned in the early Mahayana texts, the forest, city, and monastery bodhisattvas, with forest dwelling being promoted a superior, even necessary path in sutras such as the Ugraparaparsha and the Samadhiraja sutras. The early Rastrapalaparaparsha sutra also promotes a solitary life of meditation in the forests, far away from the distractions of the householder life. The Rastrapala is also highly critical of monks living in monasteries and in cities who are seen as not practicing meditation and morality. The Ritnagunasamkayagatha also says the bodhisattva should undertake ascetic practices dutanga, wander freely without a home, practice the paramitas and train under a guru in order to perfect his meditation practice and realization of prashnaparamita. These texts seem to indicate the initial bodhisattva ideal was associated with a strict forest asceticism. Mahayana Buddhism encourages everyone to become bodhisattvas and to take the bodhisattva vows. With these vows, one makes the promise to work for the complete enlightenment of all sentient beings by practicing the six perfections. Indelibly entwined with the bodhisattva vow is merit transference In the Lotus Sutra, life in this world is compared to people living in a house that is on fire. People take this world as reality pursuing worldly projects and pleasures without realizing that the house is ablaze and will soon burn down due to the inevitability of suffering. A bodhisattva is one who has a determination to free sentient beings from samsara and its cycle of death, rebirth and suffering. This type of mind is known as the mind of awakening A commonly repeated misconception in Western literature is that bodhisattvas delay their own liberation. This confusion is based on a misreading of several different scriptural concepts and narratives. One of these is the Tibetan teaching on three types of motivation for generating bodhicitta. According to Patrol Rinpoche's 19th century words of My Perfect Teacher, a bodhisattva might be motivated in one of three ways. They are king like bodhicitta, to aspire to become a Buddha first in order to then help sentient beings. Boatman like Bodhicitta, to aspire to become a Buddha at the same time as other sentient beings. Shepherd like Bodhicitta, to aspire to become a Buddha only after all other sentient beings have done so. These three are not types of people, but rather types of motivation. According to Patrol Rinpoche, the third quality of intention is most noble, though the mode by which Buddhahood actually occurs is the first, that is, it is only possible to teach others the path to enlightenment once one has attained enlightenment oneself. The ritualized formulation of the bodhisattva vow also reflects this order becoming a Buddha so that one can then teach others to do the same. 
A bodhisattva vow ritual text attributed to Nagarjuna, of the 2nd 3rd century CE, states the vow as follows. Just as the past Tathagata Arhat Samyaksambuddhas, when engaging in the behavior of a bodhisattva, generated the aspiration to unsurpassed complete enlightenment so that all beings be liberated, all beings be freed, all beings be relieved, all beings attain complete nirvana, all beings be placed in omniscient wisdom, in the same way, I whose name is so and so, from this time forward, generate the aspiration to unsurpassed complete enlightenment so that all beings be liberated, all beings be freed, all beings be relieved, all beings attain complete nirvana, all beings be placed in omniscient wisdom." Another reason for the misconception that a bodhisattva «delays» liberation is that a bodhisattva rejects the liberation of the sravaka and pratyekabuddha, described in Mahayana literature as either inferior as in Asanga's 4th century Yogacarapum or non-existent as in the Lotus Sutra. That a bodhisattva has the option to pursue such a lesser path, but instead chooses the long path towards Buddhahood is one of the five criteria for one to be considered a bodhisattva. The other four are, being human, being a man, making a vow to become a Buddha in the presence of a previous Buddha, and receiving a prophecy from that Buddha. The six perfections that constitute bodhisattva practice should not be confused with the actual acts of benefiting beings that the bodhisattva vows to accomplish once he or she is a Buddha. The six perfections are a mental transformation and need not actually benefit anyone. This is seen in the story of Vesantara, an incarnation of Sakyamuni Buddha while he was still a bodhisattva, who commits the ultimate act of generosity by giving away his children to an evil man who mistreats them. Vesantara's actual acts do not benefit beings, in fact, he causes direct harm. However, the merit from his perfection of generosity fructifies in his lifetime as Sakyamuni Buddha when he attains complete enlightenment. Ten grounds According to many traditions within Mahayana Buddhism, on the way to becoming a Buddha, a bodhisattva proceeds through ten, or sometimes fourteen, grounds or bhumis. Below is the list of the ten bhumis and their descriptions according to the Avatamsaka Sutra and the Jewel Ornament of Liberation, a treatise by Gampopa, an influential teacher of the Tibetan Kagyu school. Other schools give slightly variant descriptions. Before a bodhisattva arrives at the first ground, he or she first must travel the first two of five paths. The path of accumulation The path of preparation The ten grounds of the bodhisattva then can be grouped into the next three paths. Bhumi 1 The path of insight Bhumis 2-7 The path of meditation Bhumis 8-10 The path of no more learning The chapter of ten grounds in the Avatamsaka Sutra refers to 52 stages. The ten grounds are Great joy, it is said that being close to enlightenment and seeing the benefit for all sentient beings, one achieves great joy, hence the name. In this Bhumi the bodhisattvas practice all perfections but especially emphasizing generosity Stainless, in accomplishing the second Bhumi, the bodhisattva is free from the stains of immorality, therefore, this Bhumi is named, "...stainless". The emphasized perfection is moral discipline Luminous, the light of Dharma is said to radiate for others from the bodhisattva who accomplishes the third bhumi. The emphasized perfection is patience Radiant, this bhumi it is said to be like a radiating light that fully burns that which opposes enlightenment. The emphasized perfection is vigor Very difficult to train, bodhisattvas who attain this ground strive to help sentient beings attain maturity, and do not become emotionally involved when such beings respond negatively, both of which are difficult to do. The emphasized perfection is meditative concentration dhyana. Obviously transcendent, by depending on the perfection of wisdom, the bodhisattva does not abide in either samsara or nirvana, so this state is obviously transcendent. The emphasized perfection is wisdom prajna. Gone afar, particular emphasis is on the perfection of skillful means upaya, to help others. Immovable, the emphasized virtue is aspiration. This immovable bhumi is where one becomes able to choose his place of rebirth. Good discriminating wisdom, the emphasized virtue is power. Cloud of Dharma, the emphasized virtue is the practice of primordial wisdom. After the ten bhumis, according to Mahayana Buddhism, one attains complete enlightenment and becomes a Buddha. With the 52 stages, the Sarangama Sutra recognizes 57 stages. 
With the ten grounds, various Vajrayana schools recognize three to ten additional grounds, mostly six more grounds with variant descriptions. A bodhisattva above the seventh ground is called a mahasattva. Some bodhisattvas, such as Samantabhadra, are also said to have already attained Buddhahood. Topic: <laughs> School doctrines. Some sutras said a beginner would take three to twenty-two countless eons to become a Buddha. Pure Land Buddhism suggests Buddhists go to the Pure Lands to practice as bodhisattvas. Tiantai, Huayan, Zen and Vajrayana schools say they teach ways to attain Buddhahood within one karmic cycle. Various traditions within Buddhism believe in specific bodhisattvas. Some bodhisattvas appear across traditions, but due to language barriers may be seen as separate entities. For example, Tibetan Buddhists believe in various forms of Chenrezig, who is Avalokiteshvara in Sanskrit, Guanyin in China, Gwaneum in Korea, Kwan Am in Vietnam, and Kanon in Japan. Followers of Tibetan Buddhism consider the Dalai Lamas and the Karmapas to be an emanation of Chenrezig, the Bodhisattva of Compassion. Kasitagarbha is another popular Bodhisattva in Japan and China. He is known for aiding those who are lost. His greatest compassionate vow is, if I do not go to the hell to help the suffering beings there, who else will go? If the hells are not empty I will not become a Buddha. Only when all living beings have been saved, will I attain Bodhi. The place of a bodhisattva's earthly deeds, such as the achievement of enlightenment or the acts of dharma, is known as a bodhimanda, and may be a site of pilgrimage. Many temples and monasteries are famous as bodhimandas. Perhaps the most famous bodhimanda of all is the Bodhi tree under which Sakyamuni achieved Buddhahood. In the tradition of Chinese Buddhism, there are four mountains that are regarded as bodhimandas for bodhisattvas, with each site having major monasteries and being popular for pilgrimages by both monastics and laypeople. These four bodhimandas are Mount Putuo, Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva, Mount Emei, Samantabhadra Bodhisattva, Mount Watai, Manjusri Bodhisattva. Mount Juhua, Kasitagarbha Bodhisattva Four Great Bodhisattvas in Chinese Buddhism Si Da Pu Pu Sa is short for Pu Ti Sa Duo In this order, compassion, wisdom, vow and practice Bei Ji Yuan Xing Wan, Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva Guan Shi Yin Pu Sa Short Guan Yin Pu Sa stands for Great Compassion 2. Manjusri Bodhisattva Wen Shu Shi Li Pu Sa Short Wen Shu Pu Sa stands for Great Wisdom. 3. Kasitagarbha Bodhisattva De Kang Pu Sa stands for Great Vow. 4. Samantabhadra Bodhisattva Pu Xian Pu Sa stands for Great Practice. Gallery See also Bodhicharyavatara a guide to the Bodhisattva way of life Bodhisattvas of the earth Bodhisattva vows Buddhist holidays Karuna compassion in Sanskrit List of Bodhisattvas Vegetarianism in Buddhism Topic Notes Topic References Topic. External links The Ethical Discipline of Bodhisattvas, by Geshe Sanam Rinchen Tibetan Gelug tradition. Bodhisattva, probably Avalokiteshvara Guanyin, Northern Qi Dynasty, c. 550–60, video, SmartHistory. The 37 Practices of Bodhisattvas online with commentaries the 37 Practices of Bodhisattvas, all in one page with memory aids and collection of different versions. Audio recitation of The 37 Practices of Bodhisattvas in MP3 format Paul and Lee voices. What a Bodhisattva Does, 37 Practices by Nulchu Thogma with slideshow format. Access to Insight Library, Bodhi's Wheel 409 Arahants, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas by Bhikkhu Bodhi The Bodhisattva Ideal in Theravada Theory and Practice by Jeffrey Samuels Online Exhibition Analyzing a Korean Bodhisattva Sculpture Budanet. Net Kasitagarbha Bodhisattva Sacred Visions, Early Paintings from Central Tibet, Fully Digitized Text from the Metropolitan Museum of Art Libraries <laughs>